Hello, everyone. This is Jack. You can also call me Bai Hao, which is my Chinese name here, my real name. Um, I'm from uh, ZJUUIUC Institute, and it stands for Zhejiang University and UIUC, which is in America, as you know, um, combined institute. And I'm going for uh, going to UIUC for exchange this year. Now, coming back to our paper. It's about a training method for video post ready with ideology of action recognition. Let's see what will happen in this paper. So this paper is based on a paper called uh, 3D human post estimation in video with temporal convolutions and semi-supervised training. This paper is very interesting because it uses temporal convolutions. And also it, it is mainly about the task for uh, post estimation, which is like you have a, a human that is running and you, you can estimate its, uh, its place, it, where it will be in one minute, and also uh, what will, will it post be, these two things. And um, the GitHub name for this project is called Video Post 3D. Uh, so you can see that it's actually three elements. First one is it's 3D, it's not 2D. So it, it requires a large amount of data. It, it's from the square to, to, to the third power, right? And also it's about pose, which I just mentioned. And also it's about video. The video is, is because it's uh, a series of data that is very dense. Like in one minute, uh, in one second, you may have 60, uh, six, uh, 60. yeah, you have 60 frames in one second, which is a huge amount. It is just about video. So every word in this uh, GitHub page name applies, implies for a very huge amount of data, as you can see. So the problem just comes out that FCN, which is called fully convolutional network, and a TCN, which is, which is called temporal convolutional network, they combine up to be a very complex design. And also, it requires a large amount of data. As you can see, that CNN is actually not something defined. It's not something that is uh, invented for temporal things. It's actually for, I think, more spatial things. But uh, this year's researches have been very, uh, I think, impressive in this field that they use temporal data and they construct the CNN on these temporal data as they make this temporal data, this series of frames, like I guess you can see, this, this series of frames together into one node of CNN node. And this kernel can deal with time. It can deal with time. And in this case, it just takes a lot of time, just uh, no time, but I think a more precise description is computing resource. Which is GPU, and you have you, you can see that GPU is actually it's rising its price these days. So how can we achieve that to make the performance a bit better and uh, just use less computing resources and maybe even we can improve a bit of its precision? Now comes the inspiration part. As you can see that in this paper called "Does Human Action Recognition Benefit from?" Post estimation. It uses an uh, architecture that it use uh, it it use the action recognition first, the information first, and you pass it into the post estimation part. The post estimation use three steps to process the data, and also and at last it use the additional information to give back to the three D post based um, action recognition, and it can help with the action action recognition. In this case, we, we must wonder whether we can do it vice versa. That is, whether we can use the action recognition to make post estimation better. Following this rule, the approach we developed just came out. It is like um, in the video post 3D, we, we make everything into the system. For example, there is a sitting one, there's a, uh, I think, dancing one and there is uh, someone doing sports and then someone walking 
you make this four information go into your system at the same time. This is called not action sensitive, or you just do not use action recognition here. But in our system, we use an action recognition part that is called you classify this kind of images and push into the system one by one. For example, you use uh, you use the uh, working one passing into the system and you use the system that has the, the thing that pass in to run out the estimation. You use this argument, only this action to train and to estimate the arguments that you push out with the standard argument. Okay, let's do it more precisely. As, as you can see that uh, I, I will not mention too much about technical details. You can come to see my paper, but uh, these formulas are worth mentioning. The first one is um, the difference between a common problem and an action-based problem. A common problem is that you, and you have a lot of data. You do not have a limited amount of data. You have all types of data. You can, you can train all of them and you want to gain a overall good estimation of every data that is the average so in this kind of problems our variable control strategy is that we use the same amount of data total data into both systems for example nac equal to 15 uh, in our video post 3d paper and um, so th this epoch should be 15 times less than this epoch because every time we're just passing one type, but every time here we're passing 15 times, uh, 15 times much more uh, data. So the time that, uh, so the epoch that we change this should be 15 times longer. And also this is not always the case. As you can see that 15 is approximate number because if say this, this action has 20 uh, frames, but this has only 16 frames, then it should not be that precise, right? And you need to use this formula. This is just um, the sum of all the frames. And this is the sum of the exact action. Another problem is called action-based problem. This is also a very popular problem in the, these days because you only want to give in a certain kind of training data, that type, which type is only about one action. For example, you only transfer this kind of sitting data in there and you want this specific kind of action to be resolved, to be estimated here. And in this kind of problems that the control variable is a bit different. In this kind, we pass all the data in for about uh, six, uh, for uh, say there are 6,000 data there and we pass all the data into the video port ready operator. But in here, we can also, we can only pass 400 to control the variables because we only have one type of data. Okay, now let's see about the results. The first one is a protocol, the MGJP error, which is very standard. And this kind, we can see that when the reception field is one or it's very small, and also the unit epoch number is small too, which uh, stands for the meaning that it's very huge and very limited data and time. When the training data and training time is very slow, you can see that our model outperforms the original one. But when it comes up, you can see that we are not doing good. Why this happens, I, I haven't drawn out a conclusion, but later we'll see. And you can see on the visualization part that um, v, on VP3D, it has a much larger variant, right? Let's go on. So the, for the VMPJP error, it's actually the same. Um, VMPJP is it does not vary and vary a lot uh, from the MPJP because it's also it's only about changing the displacement to the velocity, and in, in this case you can see that the average um, the average 
uh, estimation error of hours is doing better than the original one. This is in a small case. And also, and this, this time, the median case is also becoming our advantage. But as, as you can see that when it comes lot, much larger, the original one is still doing better. This is the result. Also, we can take a look at the temporal comparison. Say that uh, you can see that one epoch does not imply uh, that the same amount of epochs, uh, for example, two by two, the original changes two epochs, we change two epochs, uh, epochs, but the time for them is not exactly the same. The number of epochs to be the same does not imply the time of them to be the same. And you can see that our model outperforms the original, the original model by more than three times of performance. You can see that using the uh, MPJP TPR, which is called uh, actually the time precision rate, we outperforms it by a very large amount. And also you can see that for the temporal comparison with a large amount of data, this is very, very large. You can see that the green line is um, the original one. You can see that it's converging very slow. It's converging, it, it bounces up and down and down. But another advantage of the original one is that you it can converge all the time. It converges for about 80 epochs and it still tends to converge to be lower. In this case, but ours model cannot do that. We converge very quick. We converge at about, um, I think, uh, uh, four epochs. We, we converge at four epochs. And uh, let's look at the red line. It is still ours. It's, it's also four epochs and then we converge, then we are down. This is the case that you can see that the original one has a lower result in the end when, when we are using a large amount of data. You can see that uh, um, the green line and also the uh, blue line is these two, they converge very slow, but they can do better in the end. But our model just uses, uh, our model uses a certain type of data. And in this case, it converges quicker, but it cannot do better in the end. This is actually something gives rise to some general thoughts. And you can see that looking at Apple, then banana, you can estimate uh, apple better, but slower than simply looking at apple. It's like if your child is uh, learning something, you give them three types of things and they, they can learn the three types all the better, but it takes more time. If, if you just um, keep them looking at one thing for three, three times longer, he can learn that thing well, but he cannot anything about uh, the other two. And also, even though it, he can learn it better, he cannot learn it more precise because he cannot tell the difference between the, those things. So they cannot uh, just add, identify the, exactly the thing that you want him to uh, classify. That is the case. Okay, so this is the reference page for my paper. You can turn to my paper uh, for more info. Yes, and thanks for listening.